Well, here we are in the second Sunday in Lent. We're continuing our journey together through the season of Lent. And as I said last Sunday, it is a 40-day period in which we are intentionally, purposely preparing ourselves for new growth and new life. And so fittingly enough, our gospel reading for the second Sunday in Lent is one in which Jesus says that we must be born again. Now, what does that mean, to be born again? Well, most of us are familiar with the term born-again Christian. That's kind of become a, a popular term in our lifetime. It actually just started in the 1970s. Uh, it was a, a very popular movement in the evangelical church in the United States. A group of very conservative Christians who proclaimed that they were born-again Christians. They proclaimed that Jesus was their personal Lord and Savior, and they believed that everyone must accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior in order to be saved. And this group of Christians tends to take the Bible literally, which is kind of ironic if you think about it, because in today's gospel reading in which Jesus speaks of being born again, he also says not to take his words literally. So as we just heard, Nicodemus comes to Jesus. Now Nicodemus was a religious teacher. He was a Pharisee. He knew scripture backwards and forwards. If there was a course in scripture, he would get an A. And everybody would come to Nicodemus when they wanted answers about their faith. He was a well-respected religious teacher. And yet we find him here going to Jesus in the middle of the night, in the cloak of darkness. I guess he didn't want anybody to see that he needed to go to Jesus for some answers himself. But he goes to Jesus about how do we inherit, how do we get et eternal life? And Jesus says, you must be born again. And Nicodemus doesn't get it because Nicodemus is a literalist. He says, how can one be born again? How can you go back inside your mother's womb? And Jesus says, how can you be a spiritual teacher and not get what I'm saying? Because Jesus, of course, was speaking not literally. He was speaking spiritually, symbolically. For Jesus, the term born again means we must die more and more to our false self, to our ego self, so that we can awaken more and more, give birth to the true self, the divine self, the Christ self. And it's not a one-time proclamation that you say, I've declared Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Boom, I'm saved. Being born again is an ongoing process. Some spiritual teachers say we're born again every day. And some say we're born again every moment. Every day, every moment, every minute, we get to choose. Are we going to be about something newer, something truer? It's about letting go of the things that are no longer serving us. All of the things that are getting in the way of our discovery of the light within us. That's what being born again means. And yet, as we've seen in our lifetime, the very literal interpretation of this gospel passage has led to so much division, so much misunderstanding. It is also from this gospel passage that we hear that famous quote, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that God gave his only son. Whoever believes in him will have eternal life. I would guess that this quote, John 3.16, is probably the most famous Bible quote in America today. You go to a NASCAR race or a football game, you see people holding up signs that say, John 3.16. You see it on hats and t-shirts and bumper stickers. I shared with you last year that one local mechanic shop had in their newspaper ad, 
come in and recite John 3.16 and receive a free oil change. No joke. What is it about John 3.16 that evangelical Christians love so much? Why is it the Bible quote that they want to share with everyone? Well, I'd like to believe it's the first six words. For God so loved the world. Wouldn't that be amazing if that's what they wanted everybody to know? God loves you so much. Sadly, however, I think it's the latter part of the quote that they're trying to emphasize. Jesus is the only way. No one can come to the Father except through him. There's no other way but Christianity. You must accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior in order to be saved. That is not what John 3.16 is about. That is a literal interpretation of Scripture, which we've shared before is the lowest level of meaning when you read Scripture from a literal level. Scripture is meant to be understood spiritually, symbolically. When Jesus says, I am the way, he doesn't mean him, Jesus of Nazareth. He means the way. My way of living, my way of loving, my way of serving, my way of forgiving, that's the way that leads to salvation, to freedom. Notice in this passage of John 3.16, Jesus refers to the Son of God or the only begotten Son. Why would he be talking about himself in the third person? I mean, why would he say, whoever believes in him will have eternal life? Why wouldn't he say, whoever believes in me will have eternal life? Because he's not talking about himself. He's not speaking of his human Jesus of Nazareth self. He's speaking from his Christ self, from his divine self. I've shared with you before, Christ and Jesus are two different things. The Christ existed billions of years before Jesus. When God birthed everything into existence, there was the Christ. Jesus was a human being 2,000 years ago, who through his life's journey discovered that light was within him. He became one with everything. And then he made it his mission to go out and not to say, I have the light, worship me. He made it his mission to say, you're the light. And and my mission is to teach you how you too can discover this light within yourself. That's why he said, all the things I've done, you can do these things and greater. He wanted us to awaken to the light that is within us. So he said, follow this way. Love people unconditionally. Forgive people 70 times, seven times, over and over again. Serve the least of these in your midst. Because Jesus knew when you followed this way, you died to the ego, to the false self. And when you do that, you awaken to the light within you, the divine self, the Christ self. That's what John 3.16 is all about. Meister Eckhart was a Christian mystic who lived in the 13th century. And he said this, God has not begot only one son. The eternal is forever begetting the only begotten. The eternal is forever begetting the only begotten. He said that in the 13th century. So you can see why the Christian church branded him a heretic. Now, a more recent Christian mystic was the Episcopal Bishop John Shelby Spong. He passed away last year. Probably in our lifetime, he was the greatest scripture scholar. And he said, Christianity 
is not about the divine becoming human. Christianity, he said, is about the human becoming divine. That's what Christianity is. Your discovery of God's light within you. So, my friends, Lent is the perfect opportunity for us to examine what are the things in my life that are keeping me from my light? What are the things I need to let go of, fast from, give up? Give up the things that are no longer serving you so that you can awaken more and more to who God created you to be, the light of the world. So may you find time, not only each and every day this week, but each and every day during this season of Lent, to connect with that light that is within you so that you can hear the truth of your being the truth which Jesus says will set you free, not in the next lifetime, but in this one. Namaste. Hello, everybody. This is Sal Sapienza, and I'm so excited to share with all of you that I've written a brand new book. The book is called Childish Thinking, How the Church Keeps Us Stuck in Sunday School. Now, the title Childish Thinking comes from Christian scripture, where we hear that if we wish to grow in spiritual understanding, then we must let go of childish ways of thinking. And yet so many Christians today, even after years of Bible study and Sunday services, still have a very elementary understanding of their faith. They still understand God as some old man with a long gray beard, they think heaven is a place up in the clouds with pearly gates, that the devil is some red guy with horns and a pitchfork, and that hell is a fiery place below the earth. Those are things that we tell children. None of those descriptions appear anywhere in the Bible. And so in childish thinking, I try to dispel many of those misnomers, and I explore topics such as God, Jesus, heaven, hell, sin, prayer, and resurrection from the higher perspectives of ancient Christian mystics and contemporary progressive theologians. After each chapter, there are prayers for quiet contemplation and questions for personal reflection and journal writing. Come learn how you can let go of old ways of thinking and begin to see things with new eyes. Come and learn how you can finally graduate from Sunday school. The book is available now on Amazon, and you can read the entire introduction at childishthinking.faith.